Hey everybody, today Rado runs through eight epics, which is the latest micro game from designer I never know how to say his name. Um, uh, uh, Seiji Kanai, I think? You know, the, the creator, the designer of Love Letter, which of course is the game that has really kicked off the modern popularity obsession with microgames. This is his latest microgame, a cooperative game all about eight brave heroes that have banded together to save the world from eight terrible epics. So let's jump right into it. Now, this game supports one to eight players. You can play it solo, you can play it with eight people. And in all honesty, I think this game is probably best as either a solo game or played with a lot of players. Because if you only play with one or two, it, it really kind of loses something. And I'll talk a bit about that in the final thoughts. But I think right now to demonstrate it, I'm actually going to play it as a four-player game. I think at the very least you'd want to play it as a three or a four, maybe even a five. The more players you've got, the better. Although interestingly, the more players you've got, the harder the game gets as well. So I'm going to do it as a four-player game, and what happens is there's these eight heroes: the 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 demon who is you know joined the treasonous demon who's joined us, the saint, the witch, the mage, the swordmaster, the paladin, the general, and the artificer, or what would you call that? The blacksmith. All right, so. At the beginning of the game, everybody gets a character. You can choose randomly, or everybody can choose a character they like. I'm just I, I just put these out here. I'm just going to go on ahead and say, hey, here's player one. This is me. I am the, the treasonous demon. Jen will be player two. She is the saint. And Dobby, our, our elder beagle, will be the mysterious swordsman. And Tula, our younger beagle, although she's 12, Dobby's 14, uh, Tula will be the high paladin. So, we've got our roles set up. Everybody has a different amount of hit points. Everybody has their own special power. And you'll notice the other four heroes are still in the game. Um, all eight heroes will always be present every time you play the game. It's just that I've got, when it's my turn, I can either play as my character or I can use somebody from the common pool. So, that's the situation. Now we got to shuffle up and find out. Now, there are eight epics, but we are only going to face six of these. Over five rounds, we are going to face six of these, uh, these things like, oh, I don't know, meteorite strikes, the Black Death, a crumbling moon, etc., etc. So let's see what our first bit of trouble is going to be, shall we? Boom! Dragons are going to attack. Now, what this means is they're going to attack in three waves. The first wave, we have to, with six dice, we have to get 32 or greater total on those six dice to beat the first wave. For the second wave, we have to get 40 or greater with seven dice. And for the third wave, we have to use eight dice to get 48 or greater. So we need, basically, we need to roll a lot of high dice. So that's the situation. And um, now well, the first wave is six. So let's go on ahead and roll those six dice. And remember, we need high value. Six dice getting 32. Well, that uh, means we need to roll a, uh, a lot of high dice. Let's see what we get. All right. And these other dice, they're out. Although we can use one die to keep track of the fact that we are on the first wave of this demon. So what I got? Oh, that's pretty good. Some sixes, some sixes, some fives, some fours, some twos. Oops, that was a two. Another four. Okay, so this is what we start with. This is the dice pool. And now I will be the first player. And what I've got to do is, the, I have to, well, first of all, when I step up to the plate, when, when somebody's turn starts, they get a uh, free challenge. They get to challenge the dragon. What that means is it's a Yahtzee type thing where I can pick up to three of these dice and roll, lock, roll, lock, roll, lock. Roll them, lock one in place or more. Roll the remainder, lock one or more in place, and you know, and so on. So these are all high values. I'm going to take these three lows, and I'm going to try and roll, lock them into high values too. This always happens at the beginning of somebody's turn. You get, a, you get to challenge. So let's challenge. And let's say, all right. All right, that's not much better. I'll lock in the four. Let's go again. Give me something better. I, pff, all right, I'm getting the exact same stuff. I'll lock in the three, and <laughs> that was redonkulous. Okay, so. That was my challenge. Now, I have a choice to make. My turn can be over. In which case, my demon, I have to tap him to indicate that he is done and he will not be able to face off against the dragons anymore. If all eight heroes get tapped and they're all exhausted, we lose the game. So I don't necessarily want to tap out right yet. I mean, we could just take eight turns. I take a turn and then tap out. Jen takes a turn and so on until everybody's tapped out and then, you know, if we haven't dealt with all three waves, we lose the game. And of course, we will lose the game. We need to take more time than that. So instead of tapping out, I am going to push my demon further. Every additional action my demon takes beyond the first one hurts him, though. So he starts with six hit points. He is down now to five hit points. And so I now have a choice. I can challenge again, 
and try to do better with these rolls, or I can use his special power. Now his special power is turn any die into a six. And we need sixes here, obviously. I could just, so I could, I could do some more Yahtzee stuff, or I could just turn this two into a six. And then, what are we at? We're at um, 12, that'd be 18, that'd be 23, uh, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 30. So we'd almost be there. And in fact, if I just use my power twice and turn this two and this three into a six, I think that'll give us enough to be 32. But I will have hurt myself twice. And um, you know, if I hurt myself enough, I'll die. Then I'm not exhausted. I'm literally out of the game. And if we run, if all the heroes die, we lose. If all the heroes become exhausted on a given challenge, we lose. If we beat the dragons, though, then everybody untaps and we can move on to the next challenge. So what do I got to do? I am going to hurt myself. I'm going to push myself a little bit further. And so now I. I chose my own character. I can't switch characters. I can't switch over to one of these. I just have to keep using my demon until I pass, and then it's Jen's turn. So what do I want to do? Do I want to do the Yahtzee thing, or do I... Now, my Yahtzee thing, I could potentially get all dice I need, and then, you know, get it all done. As opposed to hurting myself twice and guarantee it. Because if that's, that's four sixes, that's 24, 24, 24, 24, 24, 24. You know what? I'm just going to hurt myself twice. Boom, boom, and turn this into a six, and turn this into a six, and we're just done. Because I could have hurt myself once and then tried to go for the Yahtzee, but I might have made things even worse. Two hits, that was it. We have successfully, we have six dice, they equal 32 or more, we have beaten the first wave. And so we move on to the second wave, where we have to roll seven dice and get 40 or more. Now this still happens on my turn, so it's, I'm still going. Oh, and by the way, I should have put this little glass bead on my character to remind me that this is the character I'm using. I can't switch characters. So I rolled pretty well again. I got some assists. Uh, but now, um, I cannot get a free Yahtzee. If I quit now and bow out so that the demon won't be able to help anymore, it's Jen's turn, and she could get a free Yahtzee, and that could be the potential of what we need. Because what do we got here? We got 12... Um, uh, t t 21. So we got 21. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6, 7. We need to get to 40. We need to roll a lot more stuff. I think I'll hurt myself one more time just to get one of these, these crappy ones. Although, oh. see, hold on a second. So we got three twos. Maybe I won't hurt myself. You know what? I think I am going to bow out. I'm going to bow out. So the demon is done. My turn is over. It is now Jen's turn. She takes the gem. She can choose either to be the saint or she can be any one of these characters. Now the saint's special power is every time she hurts herself, she could heal somebody else. She could start healing the demon, but no one will ever heal her. She can't. He um, well, actually, that's not entirely true. The witch who can copy anybody's power could heal. Could copy the power of the saint specifically to heal the saint. Um, Let's see. Or is that true? Actually, no, I don't think that's true because then the saint would... No, no, no. Yeah. So I, I think it's still copying the power of the saint means you can't, the saint can't write. So anyway. Uh, so Jen's taking over. She has to pick. She either be a saint so she can start using her power to heal me back up. But I think... I think she's going to pick the artificer. All right. So the artificer steps up. The first thing you have to do is do the Yahtzee stuff. So you could pick three dice and start re-rolling, but not going to predict it. You're just only going to roll the four and hopefully make this something a little bit better. Well, actually, hold on a second. So we do that. It's 15, that's 20, um, 32, 34, 35, 36. Uh, that's not quite enough, is it? Because what the, um, the artificer can do, or special power, could... Oh, no, it's only two. I forgot. It's only two. Hold on a second. Oh, shoot. So she could take two of these dice and turn them into fives. I forgot. She can't turn all of them into fives. So let's say that Jen's not necessarily going to... I think Jen will just choose to be herself. So she stepped up to the plate. The first thing she gets to do is a Yahtzee thing. She will just roll the three lowest dice. And she'll lock in that six. She'll lock in that five. She'll roll some more. And uh, she won't lock in that, well, she'll lock in that too. So she's done rolling. We've got a bunch of high dice now. So that's 10, that's 28, 29, 31, 32, 32. All right, so both of these need to get a bit higher to be able to hit the 40 that we're going for. So that was her freebie. Now, she could pass and say her turn is done, and then the, she can't do anything else, but she's going to keep working. She's going to hurt herself, and she gets to do two things. She gets to heal somebody. She'll heal me because I'm the only one who's hurt. And now she gets to do a Yahtzee, some more Yahtzee, with only two dice. So she gets to start trying to reroll and lock these. Oh, yeah, a six. So that's nice. She'll lock that in. Should she lock this four in? What are we at now? Uh, it's 24, 34, 34. Um, so if this can become a six, we can win. So she's going to lock those. She's going to roll again um, and hopefully get a six. And she got a four. All right. So we're almost there. We're almost to the 40. 
And now Jen has a choice. She could keep pushing herself harder um, and you know heal me again, but she could only roll this thing and then lock it once, so she doesn't have much of a chance of doing anything. So I think she's going to pass as well. So she is out. The demon and the saint cannot fight the, dra the dragons anymore. Unless the general steps in. So now, it is Dobby's turn. Dobby has a choice. Dobby can either activate her own power, the Master Swordsman, which is the power that lets her, uh, lets her add or remove a die from the pool. So Dobby could bring another die in, and um, as long as she rolls a 2, uh, as it doesn't roll a 1, boom, we're set to go. So I think, well, although first of all, remember, so Dobby will step in with her own power. She won't use any from the common pool. And... First of all, she get before she uses her power, she gets one chance to re-roll. So she could turn this, she could re-roll this and maybe get a six and we'd be done. But that's only a one in six chance. She is gonna pass on her ability to do a challenge, to do a Yahtzee challenge right up front. She's gonna go straight to using her power. And her power is add or subtract another die from the roll. Here comes the new die, just don't be a one. A five. There we go. We all the dice in our pool are greater than 40. So Dobby stepped up. She has finished the second round, and now we have to finish the third. Eight dice have to equal 48. Here's the eight dice. Let's see what we got. Oh, that's not as good as before. All right, some fives, some fours, some threes, some uh, two, and a one. All right, so what is Dobby? going to do. Now Dobby's still on deck. She could hurt herself some more to add another die to the pool. I think she will. And she'll add a four. Or she'll add whatever. Be good, be good. No, it's another two. Oh dear. All right. So, and we have no more dice to roll. So she can't, or actually I think you could add this one. I don't think that's allowed. Normally, um, but she'd hurt herself again. I think she's hurt herself enough. So she is going to bow out. She's already lost almost half her life. So she's bowing out. We got a whole bunch of dice here, but we got a lot of work to get these up to a 48. So now it comes over to Tula. Tula has to choose. Does she want to activate herself? Now that would not be good because Tula's special power is turn a die into a one. Some of these things want low dice, so a one is great. The one is not useful right now. So Tula is not going to use her own paladin power. She'll use one of the other powers. I think, wow, what is she going to use? We have such a wide range. We have a lot of dice. We need to bump up to higher values. Um, let's see, not the mage. So, could turn two, that would be... Yeah, let's go in for the artifact, which we, well, we were going to. We'll, all right, so Tula is stepping up. She's not using the paladin. She's using the, artificer, or the, the artific, artificer. And uh, because she's just stepped up, she can do a three Yahtzee. She gets to pick three dice and start re-rolling. Let's take these twos and one of these threes. Because her power is going to be to flip a die, so she'll be able to flip this into a six. So she doesn't want to reroll one. She wants ones and sixes. Ones, fives, and sixes. That's what Tula is hoping for. Let's see what we get. There's a five. We'll lock that in. And so she'd be able to turn these two twos into fives. Uh, so that's 10, and this is 20. And um, this is 32, 36. We got a long ways to go. I think, oh, she'll just lock in that five. She'll try to get even better. So let's roll. Let's get some ones and sixes. All right, that's a, oh, yeah, two ones. Okay, she's locking those in. All right, so Tula's done with her, and now she can pass, which means we're, I mean, we already, half of our force is gone. And they can't help anymore. These last four are the only ones. These four have to step up and finish this last thing. If everybody taps, we lose. So um, we're going to use, we're going to keep on fighting with the Miracle Artificer. We're going to use their power, which is choose two dice and flip them so they show their downside. We're going to flip both these ones, and we just got sixes. So that's a big step. So let's just put all our high dice that we are happy with. So that is um, 15, that's 22, but we still need some more. So, um, I think we'll have the Artificer go again, and instead of using the power to flip, we're still planning on flipping this, we will go on ahead and try to do some more Yahtzee to get some more ones and sixes. All right, there's another one, excellent. We'll lock in that one and that five, and then we'll try to reroll this. Let's see if we get something better with this. A two, all right, that's what it was bound to be. And then she'll hurt herself one more time and turn these into sixes. And is that enough? Have we hit our 48 that we have to hit now? What do we got? We've got 20 and 24 is um, 44. Is that right? Right, um, that's uh, 24, 
34, 44, crap. All right, so we're almost there. Um, we have one more die. Um, so we're, we're at 44, we're 46. We need, we need a four, five, or six on this die. I think she's going to tap out now, and so Tula is done. Tool is done, and so it comes back over to me. Now, I, can act, I can't activate myself. I'm tired. I can't activate any of these. So I can activate the Witch, the Mage, or the General. And all we need to do, right, because we're at 24, 34, 44, or 6, for 7, for 8. We just need to turn this into a 4. Who is best suited to do that? I think we're going to have the Witch come up. Um, I'm going to take over. I'm going to use the Witch. Now, the Witch, when she steps up, she gets a chance. So let's just roll a 4 and be done with this. Nope, not good enough. So the witch is going to keep going. Oh, no. Oh, now. Okay, I got a choice. I could hurt the witch and to activate somebody's power. I could activate the artifice's power, flip this, and I'm done. But I'd hurt the witch. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to take a big gamble. I'm going to tap out on the witch. And um, then Jen's turn. She has only the mage and the, uh, the general left. She's going to have to activate one of them. She'll activate the general. All right. Now, first of all, General, just, just get a four. That's all we need to do. We don't have to bang, tap into your powers. Just get a four. Just get a four. Just get a four. Oh, okay. Drat. So, we are still one die short. We have a choice. We could tap out. Jen could tap out. And then we're down to one hero. And on that free roll, if we get the four, we're done. Otherwise, we have to start hurting this mage. Or... The general, the general is going to hurt himself. He's going to hurt himself. He's going to keep fighting. And what he's going to do is he is going to use his power, which first of all means he can wake somebody back up, and then he gets another Yahtzee thing, but only with two dice. He will wake the witch back up. And now, and he gets one die, he's going to roll that four, because I this has been crazy. I'm going to roll a four or a six. And boom, he did it. So we have defeated the we've defeated the three waves of the dragon attack. We went a bit longer than we thought. Everybody untaps now, so everybody's ready to go on to our next challenge. And as you can see, everybody's doing pretty well, except for the artificer who is almost dead. But everybody else did pretty well. You know, if 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 we can um, keep that kind of progress up, if we all if we keep everybody alive and kill almost one person here, 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 we'll make it. So that was actually a pretty successful thing. I would have liked to have done it without having to hurt the. And it was a bit of a gamble. Didn't work out. So anyway, I think we were on Tula's turn. So Tula had um, wait, what was yeah? Tula had just activated the witch, but we are done with this. So it's still Tula's turn. No, 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 it's not Tula's turn. It's going to move on to the next player. So we're moving on, or I'm sorry, it's not Dobby's turn. We're moving on to the next player. So we get our next of epics. It is Meteorite. This one, we're going to have eight waves. One die, each one of them is one die, except for the later ones are two or three dice, and we need to be rolling ones. One die, we need one. There's basically, meteors are coming, and we have to get, we have to get them all shrunken down to one. So that's what all these dice represent. So we're up. Tula can decide, hey, you know what? I think Tula will decide to be her High Paladin, because the High Paladin is in a very good position. The High Paladin's power, turn any die into a one. So we start rolling a single die. The die pool has only one. And that's what we start with. But the first thing Tula gets to do is she chooses, I will use my Paladin, which means, first of all, she gets to do her free challenge. Let's get the one. We failed. We got a three. Now she will use her power to turn this three into a one. And that's it. We finished the first level. Now let's move on to the second level. So again, and it's still Tula's turn. She can keep going. She gets a six. That's kind of useless. Um, I. Th uh. So Tula can hurt herself to turn this into a 1, or Tula could tap out so that I could start. I could use this and just flip it into a 1. But, you know, the Archer is almost dead. I think Tula will just go in and hurt herself and turn this into a 1. So, yay, we finished the second level. Let's move on to the third level. And we find out what the third level is. It's a 2. Gosh darn it, why can't I get a 1? So Tula could hurt herself again, but, you know, she's starting to get hurt. That attrition is really starting to stack up. I think she's going to tap out. Because the general could always bring her back in. So Tula's out. It's over to me. It's my turn. Who am I going to bring in? I will bring in the witch. The witch is always the most powerful. Because again, you can use anybody's power. So the witch came in. The witch gets to do a challenge. That's just... Uh, well, I only have a 1 in 6 chance. Well, hold on a second now. I'm not going to bring in the witch. Because the witch only has 4 hit points. Those are precious hit points. Those are clutch time hit points. I'm going to bring in the mage. 
All right. Now the mage is perfectly fine. Hasn't taken any damage so far. I have a choice. I can do the challenge and I have a one in six chance of turning this into a one. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to skip that and go directly to hurting myself with the mage because he can add or subtract one to all dice of a given value. He's just going to subtract one off of this, turn it into a one and boom, we finished our level. Let's move on to level four and level four still only has one die and it's a one. Oh my gosh, that's perfect. Let's move on to level five and it is all right, I, let's roll for reals. It's a one! Oh my gosh! Wow, that makes up for all those bad rolls. It was the sixth round. Now, the sixth round, we upgrade to two dice, and we have to get them both. The total combined has to be two or less. And, well, that wasn't so great. So, um, you know, Jen, or you see, I had a really good run with that mage, but his power of adding, subtracting one is kind of useless, so I think I'm going to stop right there, and I'm going to tap out. So now it is Jen's turn. Who does she want to bring up on deck? She could bring herself on deck, so she could heal some people. I mean, this poor artificer is almost dead, but who's, who's best suited? She can't bring in any of our characters. She can bring in the, uh, the nurse, or the witch, or the general to wake somebody back up, or the artificer. Um, I guess she'll just bring herself in so she can start healing other people, I think. Right, so, um, now first of all, she does get to do a challenge, and that is up to three dice can be rolled and locked and rolled, so she'll try to get some ones, and she didn't. She has to lock one of these. I think she'll lock the six because the artificer can turn that into a one. She'll re-roll this, get a one. Oh, two sixes. Okay, that's pretty nice. So she's done. Now, she can keep pushing herself, or she can pass and let somebody else go. I think... If she, if she pushes herself, she could heal the Artificer, and then she doesn't have to. It's optional whether she wants to re-roll these. Because if she heals the Artificer, and then passes, comes over to Dobby, Dobby can activate the Artificer, turn both of these to ones, and boom, we're done, just like that. But the Artificer, yeah, I can't go what we'll do. So we'll push to heal the Artificer, and now we have the option to do some more with these, but we're just going to leave them alone. So, Jen is done. It comes over to, to Dobby. Dobby does not activate herself. She activates the Artificer. The Artificer, when upon activation, could reroll. Not going to do it. It's just going to go on ahead and hurt herself again, and flip both of these to one, and boom. We have just finished the sixth level of this. Let's move on to the seventh level, where once again, we're rolling two. And we got a one. Hooray! And we got a five. Now then, um, it's, uh, you know, Tula, Dobby is still controlling the Artificer. The Artificer can't really do anything about this five, so I think Dobby's going to pass back out, so now it's Tula is up. Tula can't activate herself to just instantly turn this into a one, which would be great, so Tula has to activate either the Witch or the General. I think she'll activate the General. Now the General, coming in, gets to do some Yahtzee challenge rerolls. Let's get a one. Oh, General, you fail. So he locks that in now. He will hurt himself to use his power. His power can wake somebody up. Let's wake up this Paladin who can turn anything into a one, and now he gets to do another Yahtzee thing. Oh my gosh, he did it! Perfect! Well done, General! And so, that means... And so, this is still Dobby's turn, controlling the General. We move on to the eighth round. In the eighth round, we're rolling three, and we need to get all ones. And we got a one, and a two, and a five. Okay. And so, Dobby can keep pushing the General, who could wake other people up and try to re-roll. But I think Dobby's going to pass, so the general is out. So now it's over here to Tula. Tula, whose paladin recently woke up, Tula will just use her own paladin. First of all, she'll try to do some rolls, because she just stepped up. That was a fail, she'll go ahead and lock the six. This was already a one, that was a fail, she'll lock it in, so that was terrible. But now she'll start using her power. She'll use her power, turn this two into a one, and use her power, turn this other, the six into a one, and boom, that's it. We have finished the meteor strike. Everybody untaps. And what's the situation? We finished two of the six challenges we have to face. Um, the Paladin is almost dead now. The Artificer is not doing great. And, but everybody else is, is doing pretty well. So we're still keeping abreast. We're still doing all right. As we move on to the third challenge, A Crumbling Moon, which is similar. Um, this one we're rolling three dice, and we have to have 15+. plus. So we roll three dice. That was terrible. That's not going to help. And so Tula is finished. So I think, it, if I recall correctly, I think it, when we draw a new card, I think it's um, that player's turn is over. So it's my turn. I'm stepping up. 
I think I'll just t I'll tap myself because I can turn I can create high value dice. Although the artificer could turn both of these into six with one action. So I think I'll, I'll step up with the Artificer. So first of all, she could roll. She's only going to roll this one and try to get a high value, which is very good. And now I'm going to keep on pushing her harder, use her special power to flip these both, and boom, we have finished the first level. We're moving on to the second level. It's still my turn. I'm still controlling the Artificer. And we got a six. And do I use her power? If I use her one more time, she's dead. The game's over, so I think I'm going to pass. She is out. It is now Jen's turn. Jen can start healing somebody or can activate anybody else as we continue to work our way through all these crumbling meteors. Next up would be God's Wrath. And then the final round, in the fifth round, we have to do two things. The Demon Emperor or the uh, we have to do both of these in whichever order we want. Demon Emperor is really interesting. you got to get a straight. And, uh, oh, where's the other one? The, oh, the Black Death is interesting. Oh, you have, what is it, eight dice that all star is sixes. You have to turn them all to ones and then do the opposite. And then there's also the world balance break where you have to do, there's four ways and you have to do kind of everything. You have to try all the different stuff. So, but I'm going to stop right there because those are the basics. We're starting our third wave. We're about at half mast. So things are going okay. But, um, you know, it depends on the dice we roll, how we keep going. As, you know, as these characters keep on getting beaten down, start dying, we run out of free heals. The witch can take over and use the power to start healing. But eventually we run out of that and we try to just limp across the finish line with maybe only one or two heroes left alive and some very dramatic final rolls in 8 Epic. And eight epics. And that's it, folks. That is how the game is played. And now, if you'd like, into the little eye up in the top right corner of the screen, or, or go to the show notes to hear some final thoughts in five, four, three, two, one.